Greetings and salutations, y'all. It is a wonderful day to be this side of the grass. On this week on Cash Card Leather Company, we are going to be doing a rustic sleigh bell strap. Uh, if you don't know what a sleigh bell strap is, usually you hang it up like on your door and you've got really nice, well, okay. You've got some that are really crappy and not nice sounding sleigh bells and you've got some that are freaking amazing like this one <laughs> um the reason i love this project so much not only do the sleigh bells sound amazing but it lets me practice my tooling and carving which is not something i get to do all the time um i did this is my second time doing this i did one last year just because i really really wanted to do one because i like the way they look um that one's still hanging up on the back <laughs> on the on the inside of the front door um, but, okay, so, I've got some tracing film, and I'm using the exact same tooling and carving pattern as I did last year. Um, so I, I already kind of drew everything in there. Tracing film, basically just this, like, very thin plastic. Um, sometimes you'll have it be, like, waxed paper. Uh, water resistant, and it's basically, like, slightly see-through, so you can lay it over a drawing and trace the drawing onto the film and then lay it over your leather once you've wet the leather and then you, you see i'm using a stylus and i'm basically tracing that into the leather you see me lift up the sheet i'm checking to see if i've gotten all of them and then i'll come in later and use what's called a swivel knife and actually cut them in so these are alternating holly leaves um it's super super simple I chose something simple just because it's easy to make it look really good. Even like I'm not super great at tooling and carving just yet, but I would say this looks pretty good. Um, definitely a long process, but it's it's definitely worth it if you have the right tools and you take the time to like maintain them. So like I, I really need to sharpen my swivel knife. Um, it was definitely dragging through the leather a little bit. You want your swivel knife to really just kind of glide through there. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I kind of just sped everything. Okay, here we go. I think I'm going to be adjusting this now. Oh. Oh, Nicola, what the heck are you doing? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching a video at the same time as, uh, you guys doing this. So, yeah. Um... Okay, yeah, so I'm, I've got straight lines going, and that's going to kind of mark, that's going to mark where the background is. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. Um, so I just wanted to use a straight edge to make sure I get those lines good. Now I am taking the tracing film off, and you're going to see there how it is. Hey, here's a swivel knife. So this is kind of a difficult thing to film. And I think I kind of gave up a little bit here um, because I noticed that it wasn't really getting like you weren't really getting a good angle. But I'm basically just re I'm cutting through all of the trace lines and I'm occasionally re-wetting the leather and you need to keep it nice and wet, but not like not soaked it's kind of a fine balance you you, you you get the hang of it once you do it for a while um yeah so yeah I'm, I'm cutting everything and um once i'm done cutting it i'm gonna go through with some basic tools and i'm gonna bevel and background everything it's gonna be pretty cool um i don't know exactly how long i filmed this for <laughs> Uh, currently I am on vacation, but you know, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. And I still wanted to get a video out for you guys. So yeah, here we go, Nicola. You did not need to film this entire thing. <laughs> um, those dots in between the holly leaves are going to be where you have the uh, sleigh bells so that's gonna be pretty cool and then I'm gonna have a buckle end and a tongue end at either end okay here we go here we go we're almost done here 
This takes a long time, so I have this sped up, like, I think, 20 times, so... Okay, so here I am going through with a bevel, and I don't do this for long before I just decide to turn the camera off. Um, but I'll come in not sped up and show you everything once I'm done tooling, before I actually dye it. And I'm going to dye it with a mix of saddle tan and walnut. Um, and it's going to look really freaking cool. This is the first time using that colorway, and it, it looks fantastic. So, yeah. Um, you can see I'm trying to get a good angle, and eventually I just give up. <laughs> right now. Okay, so I didn't end up filming most of the tooling, because I realized I really couldn't get a good angle on it with my current camera setup. It just wasn't working. So I decided to just go ahead and do it, and I'm going to show you the results here before I go ahead and dye this. I'm going to dye it a dark brown. So this, this is what we're looking at here. These are holly leaves. Um, I just basically drew up a basic holly leaf, and it's just alternating. And then they're flipped around going the other way, and there's going to be sleigh bells in the backgrounded sections. And yeah, so all of these are backgrounded. And I just, this is a very basic tooling. I'm by no means a master tooler and carver, but I like to take any opportunity to do it. So then I'm gonna be adding a buckle on one end and some holes on the other, on like smaller straps that are riveted on to the, um, to the main sleigh bell strap. And you will see that here pretty soon. Okay, so back to uh, editing Nikola. Commentary Nikola is what my name should be. Um, here I am just laying out my tools that I'm going to be using for this portion. And I'm just picking out the hole sizes that I want. And uh, that other big tool that you see is called an oblong punch. And what that does is, I mean, it punches out an oblong hole basically. And you, that's where the... Uh, that's where the sleigh bells are going to go in. You'll see that in a minute. Yeah, so I really, really like how the colors turned out. I'm going to definitely be using this from now on whenever I get to dye anything. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so here I am putting the holes in for the... I think this is... This is the tongue end. Yeah. Um, just like how you would have on a regular buckle. Or a, a regular belt. But these, these won't necessarily be used like four belts like that um so and then i'm just putting in the buckle on the other end here and yeah these are one inch and then the main project is two and a half inches um and i'm just riveting like i would any other strap um these are like i think the medium size antique brass double cap rivets and then I'm just riveting. I don't think I actually have this end in the shot because I realize that <laughs> I realize it's too late. Honestly, um, I th I'm pretty sure I, I changed to extra wide here pretty soon. But yeah, I'm just doing exactly what you saw me do before. Um, I did not do any sort of edge dressing for this. I was originally going to, but. I don't know why, but just like something about the lighter edges just looked really cool to me. Um, tell me, tell, tell me what you think. So yeah, you can see now I changed the. After realizing. <laughs> um, okay, now I'm putting in the spots, and this is a this is quite a an arduous process because um, you gotta the the spots have like two prongs, and you have to cut each hole for each spot and. I think there's something like probably 30 or 40 spots on here. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I show a little bit of it, um, but it, it's it's definitely a little bit of a commitment if you're going to put a lot of spots on your projects. It's definitely worth it in the end, but just expect to be bent over your project for a while. <laughs> um, and the, the tool I'm using to cut it is just an X-Acto knife. Okay. Now I'm showing, once I have all the 
spots in, I'm just hammering the tines on the back so they kind of dig into the leather a little bit. And one, it helps the spots stay in, but two, you won't feel those then after you've like tapped them in. Um, yeah, so you can see there's a lot of spots, but I think it looks freaking awesome. Okay, y'all, I wanted to show you because I didn't really show a lot of the stamping just because the camera angles weren't right. I wanted to show you this before we put on the sleigh bells. I just wanted to give you an idea of what this tooling and carving looks like now that I've put a finish on it. There we go. Now both cameras can see. What? There's two cameras? Oh my gosh! So yeah, as you've guessed, these holes are for the sleigh bells. And then I have put these little metal things are called spots. I absolutely love the way spots look, but be warned if you try and use them, they are a pain in the ass to put in manually. You can do it. If I can remember, I'll link to a really good video where I learned how to do this. But regardless, you can just look up how to how to set spots. You can do it, it just takes a very long time. But I think they look fantastic, especially on a long strap like this. So you've got the buckle end here, and then you've got the tongue end here. Now, this is not actually going to be used, of course. If it was gonna be used, I would have put a keeper here. But this is more so, this is gonna hang on the back of a door or something like that. But now, for my favorite part, let's hear those jingles. It sounds like Santa Claus is coming to town. Just listen to that beautiful sound. Look at these freaking, just look at how amazing these are. God. So I got these from Weaver Leather. These are the, by far the nicest sleigh bells I've ever seen. Oh my God, they're just, music to my ears now watch watch this transformation okay we've got this look at how just absolutely incredible this looks once I put what is it five of these guys in here I mean it's just this is my favorite part Oh, <laughs> I could honestly stand here and listen to these all day. Okay, so that is how it looks. now. We're okay, so we're coming up on the end of this video. Um, I think this turned out fantastic. Uh, the last part of the process is to put some lace through these holes. I don't know why I was having trouble putting lace through this time. I didn't have this problem last time, but whatever <laughs> I had to put I, I had to end up putting on a uh, a lacing needle um, to actually get it through and the first time I grabbed the wrong size so it was, it was just not my day for lacing <laughs> but eventually I got it through um, you can get like sleigh bell pins where if you're gonna be having a service one like one that you're gonna have around let's say like a cart horse or something of that nature um, or a reindeer if you're making these for let's say like some kind of winter show or something where they're gonna have cart rides and reindeer and whatever um, you have pins like kind of metal pins that lock them in but there's no point in buying them if you're just making it for decoration they're great at keeping them in, but like, it's the, yeah. So yeah, you just tie both ends, and uh, there you go.
those sleigh bells are never coming out unless you cut the lace, which is just fantastic. Boom. See you guys later. Hope you enjoyed the video. Peace.